not a a curse. Uh, you say retreat. It's not like oh boo hiss. You know, you never never retreat. Never go back. Uh, there there is necessity in life for retreat. Retreat is a is a necessary thing. We're not talking simply about people in religious orders who go on a retreat. There are people in lodges. There are all forms of, shall we say, retreat where people go and they, they spend uh, time away from everything. You go someplace and you just sort of like a vacation without the Ferris wheel and the amusement park and all the, the hot tubs and stuff. You, you go someplace just to be with other people and, and to, to speak and deal and and determine what the hell life is all about, retreat. Well, retreat, you know, there, and, and retreat is also legitimate, even even militarily. If there, there comes a time, if, if you don't retreat, you die. Now, there's the old saying, you know, uh, and I forget exactly the way it goes, but um, you, what you do is you live again, live, live to fight another day. Uh, you might not be able to win. What you have to do is you run run away, so that you can live and fight another day. Uh, if you if you stay there and you die, then you're going. You're finished. You have to strategically retreat so that you can stay alive, so that you still have something worthwhile. Instead of just sacrificing it all needlessly, you don't have to. There is some kind of a a hard-ass thing with some groups and some people about retreating. Never say die, never give in, you know, do or die. And that's bullshit. You're better off cutting back, cut, you know, cutting back and getting away and regrouping and then committing another assault. At least you're still going to have some kind of impetus to put onto the enemy uh, later on. But there are times that if you don't, you know, there comes a time, you know, you have to retreat. You have to back off. You know, and I'm I'm not interested, of course, in going forward into battle any longer. I just I want to retreat. I want to retreat someplace far enough behind the lines that no matter what happens, it'll take long after I'm dead for the bastards to catch up with me. See, I just want to get all the way to help back away from it. Who needs any of this kind of nonsense? This garbage? This shit? You know, you walk down the street, you know, and it's disgusting. Totally disgusting, and uh, I, I, I have, I've had enough. There's no way I'm going to change any of this. What the hell are you going to? You got slogans, you got programs, you got all the goofy shit that the city and the state and the, the, the federal government they. Oh, let's have a program. Oh, let's have a let's have a, a condition here. Let's let's uh, let's let's uh, put little everybody make up little badges. You know, just say no to drugs and all this kind. Of, you know, come on, you know, give me a break. You're not going to change anybody's way of living by, by this kind of thing. And I'm just wasting a lot of time here at this point talking because uh, I'm not really saying anything. Uh, I don't want to be living in hostile territory. John Martin has neighbors that apparently called in a complaint against his car because, of, according to John, the, 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 the excuse was his car is dirty. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to be living around people who are hostile. Uh, I want to be living in, in, a, in an environment where I have people. If, if they, I don't want. I don't necessarily need people that love me, but I, I would like to be living in a neutral situation where nobody. Ideally, of course, I don't know what I'm asking for here. Am I asking for utopia? I would like to live in a place where people really don't know who the other person is, and nobody nobody bothers anybody. So everybody lives their own life. You can worship a rock. You can worship Jesus. You can be a Muslim. You can be a you can be whatever you want to be, and you can enjoy whatever the hell you want to enjoy, and and not interfere or impede anyone else's uh, situation in life. What, what is so uh, extreme about that? You know, today that is an extreme. If you want to live someplace where you are not impeded or impaired or compromised in one which way, shape, or form by somebody else, that seems to be almost a pipe dream. That seems almost to be like utopic. 
Well, there is no such place. You can't go anywhere where you're not compromised by someone else's activity. I, I would hate to think that that's the case. I truly would. That doesn't leave a person much of anything, does it, to look forward to in life? Where you can, you can live and conduct yourself. I'm, unfortunately, I'm a quiet kind of guy. I'm not out there. I don't have to have my stereo blasting at nine million decibels and quivering the pictures on the wall in order to, to appreciate musical sound. <laughs> Most of these numb nuts have no musical <clears throat> expertise whatsoever. They just like to listen to things loud, loud uh, simply because they're numb nuts, they're imbeciles. They, they don't appreciate the, the subtlety of, of anything in life. Everything has to be bombastic, see? and that's because they're like children, they're like infants in a crib. Uh, but getting uh, back to John Martin here with the, with a car, you know, I, 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 I'm just, uh, this isn't, uh, I shouldn't be, um, and John Martin uh, does apparently make, I, I can't, I can't tell you, see, I don't know, I don't know all of the intimate details, intimacy, intimacy, uh, intimacy is, a, is an interesting word, intimacy means that you know what color panties is. Uh, your um, lady friend is wearing intimacy means you know perhaps uh, certain things about one's someone else's personal physique or personal circumstances. Intimacy is something that I am unable to uh, um, have. I, I, I have no way of having. I don't have intimacy with anyone other than myself. I have intimacy with myself and my pussy cats, but other than that, uh, nobody else has. You know that or shouldn't unless they drilled holes through the walls or something like that. I keep to myself quite um, properly. But so I, I don't know what is what with anyone. People tell me things. John Martin, as much as I think John Martin is a very proper and worthwhile person, I still don't know what he might do or what other people might do. Uh, we, we None of us know what the other you know, you go, you go to court, you know, and a, as a jurist, you have to listen to both sides of the story to find out who the hell is doing what the who. Uh, regardless of who's being arrested, regardless of what the charges are, you still have to listen to what the, the circumstances are, as best as can be explained by witnesses and so forth. Uh, life, as I say, life, I think life stinks. I am tired of this. I am tired of all of this. I'm tired of hassling and wrestling and every other damn thing. I just want to be someplace where I don't I don't really have to put up with anybody else. And of course, nobody has to put up with me for God's sake. I'm a physical I'm a physical specimen. I'm a a, a, a physical being. I'm not a spirit. I'm a physical being. I take up space and mass as any other physical thing does. But other than that, I don't I don't do anything. To, to my knowledge, at least within the past number of years, that would compromise anyone else's life on the face of this planet. Uh, I'm not making any kind of noise. I'm not making uh, no kids, no car. I'm not making any kind of pollution. I'm not doing anything. And I am, I am not doing this because I am fully realizant of not doing this type of thing. Other people, they just go ahead and do whatever the hell they damn well please. They don't give a shit. They don't even have a, a, the slightest, they don't even have thought one about the fact that they're polluting, the fact that they're making noise, they're disturbing somebody else, the fact that they're creating a condition uh, that other people have to put up with and deal with and, and compromising the community, uh, individuals' rights and so forth. Hey, other people don't think about that. They just go ahead and do whatever the hell they damn well please in the name of great American freedom. Well, I I do not believe in that great American freedom in that regard. My situation in life is totally the opposite. You know, you can eat, you can drink, you can listen to music, you can do what you can do damn near everything in life. You can have sex with a woman without her screaming her head off. Uh, disturbing the next door neighbors when you're having sex with a woman. If, if you're fortunate enough to have that much of a passionate woman, that I say passionate, that much of a, a verbally passionate woman, 
Not that I know anything about that or want anything, but you hear about people, you know, ah, 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 you know so uh, I, uh, there's, there's not, I don't even have anything anywhere near that to begin with. If I did, I, would, I could understand my neighbor's distress at that if I was having uh, that kind of a situation, and there was, you know, there's, they're, they're hearing it through the walls. I don't know what it is with people that they're just totally non-caring about anybody else around them. They do whatever they want to do because, hey, this is a free country and we're all this and that and yada, yada. Uh, I, don't, I don't buy that. I don't believe that. I think you have an obligation. You have an obligation to the people around you to keep it reasonable. And not only that, but they, they have uh, the kids, the, the cars. There's just, there's just too much today to, to be concerned with. So therefore, what you have to do is you have to get away from the kids, the cars, and all the rest of the shit, the stereos, the, the, the rest of the circumstances around you. You, you bail out. you got to bail out. There's nothing else to do but bail out. You have to get the hell out. You can't change anything. You're not going to be able to fight. It isn't a matter of being a fighter. You can be, a, you know, you can be out there in the street. You can organize a bunch of other... I'm not going to use this term, and I'm, it's, it's awful, but you can organize a bunch of other idiots to go along with you somehow or another. You might be able to bullshit them or convince them somehow or another. Maybe you go offer them coffee and cakes or something like that or uh, something. Uh, it, it's not going to do any damn good. You don't think that anybody gives a goddamn shit about anybody else's opinion, do you, under any, any circumstances? An opinion isn't worth it. It's worth his weight and shit. An opinion is nothing. If somebody doesn't like what you think of them, they don't give a goddamn about that. I should care. I should care what somebody thinks about me. Nobody else gives a goddamn what I think about them. You think Tina gives a shit? You think anybody else in this neighborhood gives a goddamn about what I think about them? Of course not. Why should they? What am I going to do? It doesn't matter. I can feel bad. Tough apples, you know. Screw you. You feel bad about me? Fuck you. You know, I'm still doing what I want to do. And that's what you're up against. What you have to do is, you know, you, you can't win. There is no way. I would like somebody, you know, uh, I would like somebody to tell me how the hell you can conceivably win in, in this kind of game. You can't win. There is no way that I can see to win. What you have to do is get your coat and get your need. I sing that in first, first night. And I leave you where he's on the doorstep. Just direct your feet, uh, you know, to uh, get, as a fly buzzing around my head here. So you, you, you have to get out. That's all. You just simply have to get the hell out. You have to go someplace else. You know, go to Montana. Build a build a tar paper shack. You know, in Montana. What are you going to do? Yeah? Everybody loved Kaczynski out there. You build a tar paper shack. He was a mad bomber. You build a tar paper shack in Montana. And everybody thought he's a really nice guy. He went to the library and so forth. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you, it was probably a nice, peaceful life out there. Anyhow, he was directing his missiles in from a nice, peaceful area. Yeah, okay. 10-4 for now. Not but he is complaining. People have uh, no trouble butchering animals, whether they be fowl or pork or beef. Uh, people have no trouble butchering animals for their food consumption. Uh, their existence on the face of this earth is to provide food for human beings. Uh, ac according, this is this is a, a, a mental a definition. Uh, I think perhaps uh, is is it not to be said that there are human beings on this on this on the face of the planet that are not designed the same they are designed to be uh, common very common labor and people who are uh, of a mental uh, level that are content to be alive content to do uh, the physical chores and their mentality allows them to be happy and it's a, it's a psychological thing with with these folks that they they are not designed to be above and beyond what they are in in the human 
area. Uh, people who are doing common labor, and they're happy. They're happy to be able to do common labor and, and get uh, get adequate, just adequate wages, of course, naturally. And they they have no psychological. Their mentality doesn't allow them to have any real psychological designs on uh, becoming sophisticated or advancing into some uh, higher echelon of life. Uh, whereas there are other people who, and this sounds, this sounds horribly, I'm not re even referring to racial circumstances now. This isn't a matter of race. But I do believe that it seems that when you think about it, and I guess someone else has thought about this a lot. I mean, what the hell is uh, human beings have been on the face of this earth for a couple of jillion, quadrillion years now. Somebody else has to have the same kind of thought as I do, whether they be good or bad, that there are indeed levels of hum human being as well as uh, animals. If animals, uh, if there's if there's a, a condition that the animals are only here for the, for the ultimate slaughter and and feeding of human beings, why isn't that also the case with human beings? Why aren't there some human beings that are here uh, to be employed uh, as, we're not talking about slaughtering or killing or hurting or harming people, but why, why, is, why is there this, this great emphasis on equality when, in fact, equality does not really exist? Equality can only exist genuinely, the same as a diamond or gold or an emerald or any other thing. A carrot's a carrot, a tomato's a tomato. Uh, to, to say that they are equal is, 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 imp is incorrect in any which way, shape, or form, scientifically or any other way. Everything is different. There are human beings, uh, I feel, that, and this sounds horribly racist, it, as I say, it isn't a matter of racism. There are intelligent people. There are people that are designed for sophistication and intellect simply because they have been given the mentality for sophistication and intellect. And there are people who are just very, very common people who are, are, are of limited mentality. And these people, uh, there must be someone to do the common labor. And for everyone to, to be considered equal, I don't think is uh, necessarily a, a proper equation. For six hours of music being played at, at the utmost decibel output of a stereo with one or more people screaming along at the top of their lungs to accommodate or, uh, this, this uh, sound, this noise. Uh, that's, this is... Uh, offensiveness is uh, once again in the eye of the beholder, and uh, hell, I would like to uh, see some kind of definition established. Perhaps what we're going to do, I think before we can establish a definition regarding sound, we'll probably have to establish uh, the legality of the term and the word fuck. We'll be able to use that legally before we'll be able to keep the people from creating other nuisances of, of sound, of audible distaste, of audible displeasure. Another element of this soliloquy is why a human being cannot live in one's own domicile within one's own personal, private, paid for home without having someone else's exaggeration, in my opinion, of course. Now, here we go. As I say, this is where the gray area is. is you know, to, have to listen to the greatest sound in the world that would be emanating from, if you, if you had uh, the, the, the loudest conceivable sound that you could possibly imagine emanating from a premises, and you happen to be at all liable, morally, ethically, legally, circumstances. Depends. I don't, I don't, I think we're lacking in a certain element of civilization, or I should say at least civility. I think that it's quite awful that an individual can't uh, relax in one's own home, watch television perhaps, read perhaps, 
nap, sleep, perhaps, without having some reason for finding objection to someone else's extreme sounds coming in and compromising that activity, one's own personal activity that, that one is performing in one's own house. Uh, you say, well, I don't have to get up to work out, but I do feel t I do feel tired in small claims court that there is always the element of reason. When people have differences with each other, it usually has to be boiled down to what is reasonable. What is reasonable? It goes without, well, I would like, in my opinion, the way I am, from my point of view, from my soul, I understand that people have to live. I have no objection to anyone else listening to their radios or having dogs or any other thing. But by the way, there's the, the dog I didn't mention before earlier about the car thing. There's also a new dog law regarding barking dogs. After a, after a long, long time in the city of Philadelphia, we finally got to a point where you can legally have a, a, a legal foundation. I love legal, 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 legal. It's a wonderful foundation for objecting to someone else's yapping dog. I do not hate animals. I'm a pet owner, but I do object to, it's just like children. I don't have any objection to children, but I do object to children acting in unconscionable fashions, which a lot of children do these days. And I, I don't want to have to go, I don't think that should recall. I, I think that we should have a certain degree of rationality. that uh, a number of other instances of a person goats, which I guess are perhaps illegal to see the world that way. But over here they were fine with the extension of the goat. The goat is giving off a smell or speaking to the neighbor from being able to sit in the backyard without smelling, you know, I mean, where, where is the difference between sound and smell? Are we going to have people come around and say, well, it doesn't smell too bad to me. Somebody else says, oh, yeah, that smells awful to me. Well, where is this going to where we? Where is this going to end? This is a hell of a situation that we have going in, in, in our great American society today as to where individual liberties and individual freedoms and so forth. I still believe, as I said, that there has to be a sense of reason. If a person wants to have a stereo system, uh, that's, that's tuned to a certain decibel level, I believe that they should, in that event, have to have a commercial enterprise someplace or a commercial, be in a commercial area where they can, they can, they can let it rip. I, I, I did not move into a house next to a tavern. I did not move into a house next to a, uh, a farm. I don't want to hear chickens. I don't want to smell goats or pigs or any other thing. I moved into a residential neighborhood. The people that are living in the residence, uh, residences around me uh, should have, and unfortunately the problem today is, see, this is where the problem today comes in. This is the root of it all. The people today just don't have enough common consideration for their neighbors. They just want to do whatever they want to do. They figure it's a free country, and the term free country is being used so vulgarly, incorrectly, since I guess the beginning of this country, uh, and which, which a lot of people seem to think means that anything I do is perfectly fine because it's a free, I'm an American, as an American I can do whatever I want to do, I can piss on you, I can blow you to hell up, I can do whatever I want to do, and you don't have anything to say about it, and uh, I, I would like not to believe the, that, I would like to believe that uh, maybe, maybe, uh, Maybe I'm uh, in violation of the biblical, uh, the biblical, biblical parody about, uh, not parody, but parable. Parody, parable, it's interesting, isn't it? We could work with that a little bit, kick that around, have a little fun with it. The biblical parable about the meek inheriting the earth. Uh, it seems as though that uh, if you're meek, you're not going to inherit the earth. You're... you're, you're <laughs> You're only going to inherit the earth when, when you're lowered into six feet of it. Then you'll inherit it. 
Uh, the rest of the time, the some bitches that are out there blasting away, they're the guys, they're the people, they're the things, they're the creatures that are going to be running the shoe, the really big shoe. And if... I would like to uh, touch on another aspect of our conditions where anyone can do anything that they damn well please at any given time. Uh, if I have to subject, if I have to be subject to my neighbors, regardless of who they are, how close or whatever they are, uh, that means, of course, that if they can do it to me, then I obviously can do it to them. So now let's say that I have my stereo system blasting at the highest degree of decibility, and they have their stereo system blasting at the highest degree of, of decibility. The police, of course, as long as this occurring, let's say, let's say, between 10 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock at night, which I do not believe in any of this crap. I don't know whether there's, I, I have yet to see any of this actually in ordinance. I don't know where this this uh, period of time condition ever came in, that so you can commit any of this kind of nonsense that you want within that period of time. I don't know where this ever came from, but let's say that, let's say that this, this is proper. Let's say that my neighbor, who is, you, they, they turn it on and let it rip that means I can turn it on and let it rip. So we're going to have two nuclear conditions here going on. Kaboom, kaboom. What about the rest of the folks in the area? They're going to say, oh, my God, you know, there's two places that are, this, this sounds insane. Now, somebody, is, somebody, I think, that if you have any kind of mentality at all, you're going to say, yeah, surely the police are going to come around. Something is going to have to be taken care of. But really, why? If it's perfectly legal to blast your sound system as loud as you conceivably can, and, and your neighbor can blast their sound system as loud as they conceivably can, then you've got two sound systems that are really blasting. So what about the rest of the neighbors? What about the rest of the row house residents? Maybe some of them would call, maybe some of them wouldn't. But let's say we all started to do that. Uh, not that the, I, I don't even like to use that example. You know, oh, what if we all jumped off a bridge, or what if we all did this? Ah, you know, it's not going to happen, of course. But what 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 kind of condition are we allowing to be perpetrated in our neighborhoods? This should not be. There should be, and I don't know where it begins. I don't know where it ends. I am not in the business. I am not a politician. I am not in political office, of course. I don't even have it. I have absolutely, I'm just Joe Shit, the rag picker's son. I don't have much to do about anything other than trying to feed myself. But what I am saying is that since we do have people that are supposed to have the intellect and the, and the, and the desire and, in fact, in fact, the power and that's why the hell people are elected, because they want they want the power. They're asking for it. They want it. I'd like to see them use it. I'd like to see them have a little guts, a little strength. And actually, what the hell? The city could use the money. Let's start to find these, if you'll excuse this awful expression, sons of bitches that are creating all the damn problems in this in this city with the nuisance nonsense and the graffiti and the and the, the curfew violation. Let's find these people, the truants, and let's let's lay it on them, baby. Let's let's get this this society shaped up a little bit. Of course, there we go. The American Civil Liberties Union, uh, yada yada yada. Here we go. Sweetheart, it's a hell of a roller coaster ride, isn't it, in this great society of ours? But I would like to see at least somebody have enough balls to take some kind of initiative to try to square things away in this damn burg, at least. I don't know what they're, what they're going to do in Harrisburg or what they're going to do in New York or whatever. New York, let's take a little bit of, let's take a little bit of, uh, of, of, of whatever from New York. They, uh, they're telling somebody that you can't go running out in the street and squirt at some guy's windshield with, uh, with a bottle of water and then take a squeegee and wipe it off and then try to hold him up for, you know, whatever the hell he's going to give you. You can't be doing this stuff. There, there was, 
legitimate and illegitimate practice. You can't, you just can't, in my opinion, you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't even be able to sell soft pretzels on the street without a license because you should have a food handler's license. I don't know how much food is sold on the streets right now, you know, and this is another coming problem. We have vendors. This, the vendors are one condition. I'm not even terribly concerned with the vendors. They've got a problem in regard to where they're going to set up their stainless steel shacks in front of the legitimate businesses. You know, everybody owns everything in this world, and you know, these people are deciding they're going to park their ass on somebody else's area. But let's let's look a little beyond that. Right now, you know, there are people in the neighborhoods and so forth that are actually vending foods. The, that are doing it on a, on a constant basis, that have absolutely no food handler's license, no sanitation licenses, no business licenses, and so forth. I, I agree. I think that life is life is very difficult today. When, when Campbell Soup was founded, you know, people, you know, the whoever started the Dorrance people, whoever the hell it was that uh, made up the first pot of tomato soup and started taking it around to the, the local factories to give to the the cells of the employees. It was a whole different world back then, totally different world. The same as the agrarian world was different in regard to the school district. We have kids running around the street for two and a half months in the summer that have absolutely nothing to do. And there was a time when it was different. The kids had farms and chores to take care of back in those days. That's not the case these days. The kids, this is it's ridiculous to have kids just running the streets with nothing whatsoever in the world to do. You say, Gee, you're against freedom, you're against childhood freedom and all that kind of, absolutely not. But these, these are all areas that can be explored in great depth, individually, which is not what I'm up to at this point in time. What I am saying, in all honesty and in all uh, wholeheartedness, is that there is a problem today with politicians and, and the people that are supposed to be running this damn society to keep up with the times. We have to have people that are bringing laws into effect. Well, there's a hell of a lot of nuisance conditions happening in the city of Philadelphia, and there have been. And these conditions, unless you want to, unless you want to see Philadelphia, I don't know who the hell is going to pay the, the council people's salaries when there's nobody left in Philadelphia but welfare recipients and Hispanic immigrants that are just on the welfare system. And somebody, somebody's got to, you know, somebody's got to get slapped in the face. It's like the share in Moonstruck, you know, where. Nicholas Cage says, oh, I love you, and she slaps him in the face and says, snap out of it. You know, that's what I'm saying to the city of Philadelphia. Snap out of it. Get on the ball with it. With, I, you know, the school district, I know you've got a, a dance to do with the state. But when it comes to other areas, when it comes to this, with the city itself, I think that there has to be a lot of regulation looked upon in regard to nuisance conditions. I, I'm very, uh, if, believe me, if you can't live in peace, that's the reason people are leaving this city is so they can live in peace, for God's sake. They don't want to put up with graffiti. They don't want to put up with crime. They don't want to put up with noise. They don't want to put up with trash. They don't want to put up with all the rest of the garbage that goes on, the, the low-life conditions that are going on in the city of Philadelphia. Then you're never going to make a, a world-class city out of the city of Philadelphia unless you do something to start to address these conditions. You think that just because you shine up, shine up the hub down there, you know, South Street and the Avenue of the Arts and the Opera House and so forth. That's that's wonderful. That's all well and good. You know, the ballpark is a bunch of bullshit as far as I'm concerned. That's that's crap, you know, the, the, the sports arena. Oh, uh, there's money involved. You can't call billions of dollars crap. Yeah, I know this so is a big business. But when it comes to the, the, the culture of a society, what actually makes a city a city is not a stinking ballpark. If you let the rest of the city go to hell and you just have a shiny little ballpark, even if it's right where it should be, right in the middle of town, who the hell's going to come in? People have to come in and out by helicopter or someplace. What are they going to do, drive through the streets? Yeah, come on. So, when I was with the military, I was in the Army Artillery, and uh, I don't know how things are these days, but uh, 35 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, you couldn't be in the artillery without getting your uniform dirty. I don't know about the infantrymen or the rest of the guys, the cavalrymen, but in the artillery, you know, you had to get oil and grease on you as well as dirt from digging pits and so forth. You had to get your, you know, you had to soil your uniform. You had to get your uniform dirty. Other than that, you weren't doing your job, apparently. And what I'd like to 
direct to uh, a lot of politicians today is, uh, come on, get your uniform dirty. I think there's, they're afraid, everybody's afraid to, to, to get into the fray. You know, you got to get in there and mix it up. Otherwise, what the hell good are you, what the hell good is anybody as a politician? You're not elected to sit back and just try to figure out how to make uh, the streets and center cities shinier. There, there's badass stuff going on in the neighborhoods, and this is all the city. There's, there's just not enough emphasis put on the rest of the place. days where at one time middle class is similar in my uh, way to my way of thinking uh, in my random <coughs> to uh, take a, a departure uh, I feel that there are different ways for individuals to be educated uh, somehow or another, in today's society, education is not a very important thing. We talk about education. We kick it around. It's a, it's a product, but it's not an important product. Oh, it is claimed to be important, but it isn't really important. The same as religion and the same as many of the other human disciplines. And discipline, is, of course, is a bad word. We have moral discipline, we have educational discipline, we have religious discipline, we have a variety of disciplines. But these disciplines are, in fact, not important. Uh, even legal discipline. You're a member of a society, and whether or not you have education, whether, you, whether or not you have morals, whether or not you have any religious bearings, uh, there is still a discipline that is required to live within the society that you have apparently found yourself in or chosen to live in, there is a discipline required in order to, and here's the, here's the curious part, which makes me back myself up because it's difficult to explain. We have codes, we have regulations, we have a variety of, of conditions that have to be met by people, by corporations, by groups, and for some reason that there is really, it is really not the case when you boil it right on down. It is all somehow or another extreme, extremely, and I'm using the word extremely, extremely negotiable. Uh, just because we have a law against murder, and you can be a, an absolutely videotaped murderer, uh, there are still all forms of mitigation that can be employed in regard to your act. Uh, I'm not going to try to and, you know, go into any kind of specifics in this regard, but in today's society, one of the things that makes life extremely difficult, if not impossible, when it comes to living within a, a relatively closed society, like a city is. A city, in my opinion, is a relatively closed society. These are only my, defin my definitions, my terms, as opposed to living, uh, as my brother does, in a community where the houses are maybe uh, 100 uh, uh, feet apart or 200 feet apart, living in a, a, a more sparsely populated area. Uh, living in the city is a, a closed society. We are, in fact, living upon each other's backs. You have the public streets that are directly in front of your premises. You have the public highway, the public street. In any, in any given situation, there is hardly more than uh, 15 or so feet. Oh, uh, okay, excuse me. Uh, I'm just going to stop for a second. I'm, I am back. The reason I stopped was that I am, uh, of course, unfamiliar. And I say of course because I don't think anyone is familiar with every aspect of the entire uh, city of Philadelphia within, within the political boundaries, within, within the actual county boundaries of Philadelphia. There are people living within the city of Philadelphia that are living very beautifully. They are living literally in a suburban circumstance. And there is every variation 
of this, and this is what, where one of the problems comes in. Uh, there are people that are living in these situations as opposed to coming into the circumstances that are in Kensington, just to name a community, simply because I am here. I am familiar with Kensington. And we have people living right on each other's backs. They, we, they, everyone has an individual property, but it is as much of a ghetto tenement circumstance as you can imagine. Now, my problem, of course, is that how can we, re how can, how can it be reconciled? Uh, how can a law be established that reconciles the difference between ghetto tenement living and literally suburban living within a singular uh, judicial or legal or or uh, ordinancial, whatever the whatever the term might be, uh, constituency. How can you create a law for the tenements that also applies to the suburbs? There has to be something done, in my opinion, to alleviate uh, conditions that are performed and now of course you know I, I do realize that the hydrogen bomb is available of course and there are ways there are ways that the government has to eliminate human beings uh, and so forth and so on and uh, these this is all acceptable to me under certain circumstances even in, including my own certain including my own case uh, if, if I were to die I'll say the only time you're never going to hear me complain is when I am dead and if somebody kills me, I'm not going to bitch about the fact that somebody killed me. See, that, <laughs> that you can perform the ultimate atrocity on me, the ultimate atrocity, atrocity, and you are never going to hear a, a word out, a peep out of me in, in regard to what is being done to me. But there has to be some, there has to be some way. Uh, this, this, I, I, I'm, I'm staggering along here because. I, I don't have any answers myself at this point in time. However, uh, what I am saying is this. Uh, if people are going to submit themselves to political power, if, if any individual is going to set themselves up to be jurisdictional individuals, to, to, to create uh, conditions, to, to name what the conditions are, let me put it this way, to name what the conditions are, that people have to endure or suffer or live with, uh, these people are going to have to meet, in my opinion, a certain criteria. They're going to have to, one of the, the first initial criteria is to give a damn and not simply say, well, we can't do anything about this, you know. That is not an excuse. It never was an excuse. The Second World War, the First World War, the Korean conflict, the Vietnam War, Granada, you name it, baby. This that was never an excuse to say, well, we can't do much about what's going on here, you know. Uh, if, if you can get away with that today, well, I'm not going to say God bless you. I'm going to say more or less to hell with you because I, I just simply don't know. I become at a loss past a certain point which uh, I'm going to have to stop talking now because I'm, I'm losing, and uh, not my sanity. I'm, I'm just, just uh, I've just sort of this trailed off, and I have to, I have to reestablish my my thoughts here. But I, I, what I don't, un what I don't accept is that there can be common law, as I had mentioned on the phone in, in conversations with. Councilman DeChico's office. Uh, Councilman DeChico is obviously a very fine man. Everyone, everyone is fine people. Everyone's, everyone is good folks. Adolf Hitler was great. That is Stalin. Everybody. There's only one reason that anybody ever existed on the face of this earth for any length of time, and that is because a group of other people thought that they were pretty, pretty nice cats. You know, Stalin, Hitler. Mayo de Song, no matter who the hell it is, everybody, everybody was, everybody had their following, everybody had the people that, I'm going to have to cut off, I think this tape is running out, I'm going to switch to the other side. 
so I'm back again. Um, as, I, as I've said on the other side of the tape, everybody's a nice guy. There are people, there, are, there, are, there is no noted, N-O-T-E-D, no noted human being on the face of this planet in past or has not had or does not have their followers, their believers, no matter how ridiculous they are, no matter how wrong they are. Once again, all of this is, is a matter of opinion, of course. And this is the this is why I more or less have to sometimes jump off a cliff. Uh, life is insane. There are no absolutes, no matter what. The Catholic Church, we have Hinduism, we have all of these various elements that are all legitimate, even if they are in conf conflict with each other, they are all still legitimate. And this makes for, in my opinion, uh, a certain degree of insanity. I can appreciate people who have, in regard to religion, varying, I don't care if, for instance, myself, if a person wants to worship a piece of wood or a stone, if they want to worship a statue, if they want to worship the, the rising and setting of the sun. It doesn't matter to me what a person cares to worship. In fact, I'm, I always consider myself, I guess I'm becoming a little random here at this point in time because I'm, I'm, I'm sort of getting a little, as I say, all random. Uh, it doesn't matter to me what an, uh, what an individual does. I'm an extremely liberal person. If a person wants to commit suicide, if a person wants to, they, they, a person may do as they wish, but what they must do is do it without interfering with anyone else. If you wish to reproduce and have a child, you must do it and, and take the responsibility for the child yourself. It must not be a child of the state or the community. If you want to kill yourself, fine, do it. I, I always have my, I have a, a, a theory of, uh, of uh, suicide, which I won't go into now simply because of the fact that it's you know, just t take too long, but there's no problem. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give you a little synopsis. I would, I would, I would rent a car rent a garage, get a couple of bottles of champagne, get some sleeping pills, maybe maybe a couple of tapes of music that I get a kick out of, and I would just close myself off and, and carbon monoxide myself. I would take the sleeping pills, the champagne, and the carbon monoxide, and just wipe myself out totally that way. Uh, nice, easy, clean, dirt-free problem, no no sweat, you know. And then when the people find me, eventually, uh, the car is still good. The garage is still good. You know, maybe even, there might even be a bottle of champagne left there. You know, and, and some sleeping tablets for somebody else and so forth. I, and not, you know, so there's no mess. There's no mess involved. Nobody, nobody, nobody is held up. Like if you jump in front of the L train or you jump off a building, there's nobody. Nobody interfere with. There's no mess to clean up. No problem. You know, you know. At least if you can ex exit life in dignity, some kind of. You're a human being, for God's sake. Human beings should have some element of dignity above and beyond every other living creature on the face of this earth. People like to think that they are special. 